Okay. Um, I guess there are a lot of questions there in the audience. Um, well, what I guess you've been, I don't know, how many of you are uh, reading, how many of you are reading voice news on a, uh, let's say, basis that you stay a bit in touch with what is happening? Uh, all the time. Nobody? A few. About a third. Just a few. A few. A few, okay, well, I'll give you a quick wrap-up. Last year we uh, we rolled out Econ Station 2.0, which I think was highly anticipated. It is what a lot had done. Um, it stuck very well. Overall, if you look at uh, how many systems were able to boot with it, it uh, and it installed, it worked pretty well. Yeah. As, every, as always, OS2 lacks about time behind it with uh, supporting current hardware. Um, May of this year we rolled out Econ Station 2.1. That primarily had uh, a lot of fixes in for so-called AHCI disk controller, which is basically a follow-up for the old SAFTA controller of support by the uh, Daniela driver. Um, that has been pretty so far. We put air boots uh, in there to replace the IBM boot manager so that uh, Windows 7 can be uh, booted in um, it. And currently what we're now working on is uh, there are a couple of things that have happened. Half months ago, uh, David and Terrellis, by the way, can everybody still hear, hear me clearly? Yeah, we're breaking up a little bit, but for the most part the audio is good. And we'll let you know if you lose audio. Why don't you turn okay. the video off? Uh, Should I turn the video off? Well, we, we need to see him the whole time. Well, who has been, makes it better. Uh, I don't know. Who has been using recently? Uh, who has recently been using the unit out drive on his uh, on his newer systems? I can see a few people. Could you raise your hand? I'm raising my hand. <laughs> oh, okay. Well. The, the same developer that has been working on uni out has now started working with the uh, ACPI driver. Um, that has certainly been uh, a challenge to get that to work reliably, but over the last two and a half months, there has been, I, would, I can only say, substantial progress on that. Uh, for people that don't know what ACPI is, that's used to, uh, to let modern systems uh, um, uh, multi processor support and it uh, configures your hardware properly. Um, David has been working a lot on that and we hope to release that finally within the next two to four weeks a new version. Right? And it will be a lot more uh, user friendly. And anybody who has worked with ACPI or known Intel systems knows that he needs to configure all types of weird switches and that has been uh, taken care of. Um, so ACPI is moving forward. Mensa has also purchased the rights to uh, get access to the Cytex Net Graphics device driver. And uh, currently there is a, uh, a plan on the way to uh, start up with a Cytex display doctor so that it uh, will support uh, modern hardware more decently. And that it will work in conjunction with the CPI. So there are the two main uh, hardware uh, improvements that are in the pipeline for the next version. And there is also currently now being worked on uh, Flash 10. Um, the open library that's for that is, uh, is currently being uh, set up to start using the GCC compile, just like the Firefox browser. So both of at around December of this year we will be able to be in the Flash 10 version that will also work a lot more reliable. Um, and I also understood that the person that's guiding the Java 6 development from Switzerland, Sylvan Scherer, will uh, make more information publicly available about uh, Java 6 plugins for in the web browser. So that's also being worked on. Uh, um, I think I will just keep it at that little update. Um, are, are there any questions in the room there regarding uh, each 
station and what direction it's heading in. Sure, sure. Go for it. Uh, you know, one of the, I don't know if you can hear me, but one, one of the things that concerns me about the new ACPI support is that um, the people developing it have a very limited number of systems. Once it goes out to a wider community, we're going to find new things. I, I think that's inevitable. Um, how are we going to work, you know, to, to make sure that uh, the support for these new things can be worked on? You know, to, to, is David ready to work uh, to, to get ACPI functional on, on a wide variety of systems? Did you follow that, Robert? Yeah. You want me to answer that one, Robert? Uh -huh. Yeah, if you could do that, I can barely hear that, but it turned out the volume, but the yeah. microphone is a bit moody. Yeah, basically what Neil was asking is how are we gonna how are we gonna handle basically uh, defect support once we actually start releasing releasing, bleh, releasing uh, new versions of the ACPI driver. And the answer is a whole lot better than the past. <laughs> they, you know, every developer has their idiosyncrasies, and one of the problems that we had with the prior developer was that he didn't communicate well, and that'll be a lot better. Now, the other thing is, too, that we are doing work to make the, what we have more testable. One of the problems that we had before was actually getting information that was useful to a developer from a system that didn't work. Yes. And I think you're going to find that we have very much better stability than what we had with the last version of the uh, drivers with the old developer. And that in itself is going to help. We're just going to see less things. Plus, just, you know, fresh eyes always help. And one of the problems we have in OS2 that is most of us live in caves. That's my, and I actually own that URL. <laughs> one of these years, I'll actually, I live in caves too, so one, it's been taking a long time for that to become my email. But I actually own the work cave URL. <laughs> Makes sense, you know, so I just did it, yes. But anyhow, so that, the testability will be there. You'll be doing tickets the same way we did before. Uh, you know, we'll have the same thing where we're going to have somewhat lim some limitations on developer resources. But I also, but the difference will be that there will be better communication, which I think will help a lot. And also, David is, David listens, which helps. <laughs> you know, it's always a problem when someone thinks they already know the answer, even though it's not working. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so I, I have a question about the, the change from 1.2 to 2.0. I lost something that mean? irritates the crap out of me. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not a problem. It's just not, it doesn't, it used to be, well, it used, to be, well, yeah. it used to be that I could go in and change the time the DHCP waited. Right. <clears throat> I don't get that anymore. Right. So that thing sits for 55 or one minute, well, you need and to I do. don't want it to do that. I didn't spend a lot of time on it. What you need to do is do the standard thing. You have a problem, you put in a support, the support related as opposed to keep that thing. You put in a support table. Okay. Have it within a half hour to an hour and you get a response, and you won't have waited for how many months. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> this stuff is easy for me. I don't know why. You know, it's just it's simple solutions. We lost something. You know, that actually is a controllable item. It's you got you went back to the default because of the way you installed as to why. I can only guess. But it's easily fixable. Okay. Now you say easily fixable. Do you well, mean I'm that? User. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> Hold that thought one second. Uh -oh. I think we can still accumulate the questions. Yeah, sure. Do get a I can answer to some of them. Yeah, if you have another question. Uh, Any other questions? I think the, the question that was on my mind was, what are the plans for SNAP going forward? Well, well that's okay. a good since I've been a little bit involved in SNAP since I'm the guy who actually made it build once we got the source code. Uh, it builds, it installs, we basically can build and install 3.19 build level 515, which is a couple, I think 507 was the last thing we got from SciTech. Uh, whether there are any real functional changes that matter to us, who knows? 
the plan for SNAP is obviously to re-release it. What we'll do is we will take what's good from Panorama, which is I think the shadow buffer stuff, uh -huh. integrate it in, uh, we'll fix what we need to fix with the MTTRs and the GART table. Yeah. Uh, there's, don't know what we're gonna be able to do offhand with what we call PAE addressing. Well, there's a new, there's so the, you, you with us, Robert? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, yeah. sorry about Why don't you actually face this one? Our, our, our Wi-Fi code's been wrapped up for 24 yeah. hours. There's, back on. there's new methods of doing I.O. as we get through hardware. The work table stands for graphics aperture table. And it's basically a way of mapping your shared RAM, or your video memory, into main memory so you can access it quickly. MTRR stands for memory timing registers. And what they effectively do is determine how memory transactions are, are ha happening. The thing that's important about MTRRs for video is basically most of what most of what drivers write in the video screen doesn't need to ever be seen. Why? Because it's quickly overwritten. In other words, you can you write it into the screen, then you later then stand, stand on top. over on this side so you can talk more at the screen and Roger can hear you. Okay, can you hear me, Roger? Yes, Steve, what did I miss? Were you uh, okay, talking about the snap? We have two questions. <clears throat> one, we all wanted to know, okay, uh, what are we going to do to handle basically defect reporting for ACPI once the new versions come out? And what I told them uh -huh. is that essentially it's going to be the same as we've done before, and since it will be track tickets, there'll just be better communication. Because it's a different development. And also, well, I think there, are also, uh, uh, Steve, there are also some technical details that I think will make a difference. One of the things that David has done is that he, he put a lot more uh, intelligent logic inside the PSD to generate a deeper information that is a lot more usable for the developer. Well, definitely. You know, obviously, he's, gonna, he's reworking all that stuff so he can understand it because. You know, with debug information is typically only useful to the person who wrote, who generated it in the code, because that's how they understand the driver. But there's more to it than that, because one of the things David has done is made a conscious effort to uh, take what we know and get rid of the things that we used to use switches for it to set up and have this done automatically. So in terms of, there's just going to be a lot of things. The internal from the user's point of view, what it's going to do is on the vast majority of systems, it's just going to work better. And for the ones that we do have trouble, we'll just, it'll be easier to do. Well, but one of the major things that, the, uh, that has made ACPI move forward is that a lot of these switch kits that even for me and Steve were a mystery on how they, are, how they work, are gone in the new ACPI version. Now we just put a line in your configs and most of the systems, the PSD will just, will just figure it by itself how to set up the system. And the other question is, what are our plans on SNAP? And uh, basically what I said for that is, uh, you know, we've got a good open house that we're, really, we're not ready to show, and what we're going to, the plans are to integrate what we know, what's good at a panorama, and then also look at adding acceleration for the systems that we can add acceleration to with a reasonable amount of time effort. Well, for the people that are interested, and I just sent a link also to, um, to uh, Lewis's system, there's a link on the uh, Equal Station uh, SCN side of NetLabs, and there are a couple of tickets in there explaining what needs to be fixed in uh, in SNAP. And once we have fixed those issues, I heard Steve mention NTR registers. Um, just yesterday, we got a new T61 in the, the Mensis office in, and we installed the panorama on uh, 1600 times 1450. And that one has the NTR register set correctly. We then ran a uh, a benchmark on it with the full sysbench and it made extremely surprising good result of faults and running in beta mode. So um, even with even with one accelerated video from native chipsets, you can have acceptable performance. Yeah. 
that's something that uh, my friend Jerry Rash and I told him. You, yes? One thing was, uh, why? What about the oddball display resolutions? You know, like For you get a computer and it has a wide screen and it, it doesn't look, work like what? We're looking at that. First okay. of all, they can all they can all be handled. Of course, they can't be handled easily for an end user right now. Uh, we have widescreen activators for most of the major chipsets, but as is usual, the vast majority, of, a larger number of users than I think you should don't know they exist. Right. I do know about though. There's like two, ATI and Intel, or there more. Right. There's a couple, I think there's a couple, an AMD too. There's a couple, there's a, and the other thing is. Uh, Steve, you know, yeah. Steve, Steve, that there are two of them. There's an Intel and an ATI, and currently I'm working with a developer from the United States to try and get an air driver off the ground that will support all major right. chipset. Yeah, that's the goal, and what that'll do is. And, and, but that that code will end up getting wrapped into SNAP now that we have the source. The way that Panorama was done, it was not easy to integrate. It had to do with the code base not being as nice mm -hmm. and things like that. The Snap code base is very nice from the developer's point of view. And it's just easier to do things. You know, it's big, there's a learning curve, you know, but the thing is what you do is you just you focus down on the problem you want to solve and don't worry about the rest, other than not to break it. And you know, we'll be enlisting some help and stuff like that to, you know, for testing and stuff like that when the time comes. Snap is still the preferred video driver. No. Why would I want to use Panorama? Because you have a system that the Snap doesn't support properly or well. Yeah. And I've been that, lucky, I guess. Huh? I've been lucky. And Snap works for everything. Well, you know, if you don't have widescreen, uh, if you're using older hardware, yeah, that's probably true. And the thing is, too, it's sort of weird. In some ways, I would agree with you in the sense that I think Snap has gotten short shrift in its abilities. In other words, there was a claim out there that Panorama was much faster than Snap, even Vizima. And a lot of people are starting to say that's not true. So I'm not quite sure whether this is classic old wise tale that was promoted by the folks who want Panorama to succeed. And now, what is true is to actually get good performance out of Snap, according to Jerry, takes work. But what we're going to do is we're going to get that stuff documented. What? Yes? Steve. Yes. Well, I, I, can answer that. I can answer that old wise still story about the performance of Snap versus Panorama. It all seems to have to do with the, the fact that on some systems, uh, Panorama sets up the NTRR registers correctly, and on other systems, SEP does it correctly. And that's what results in uh, dramatic performance differences. Exactly. Yeah, I was... Yeah, and that, again, see, what we'll do, and that's what we we'll merge the code, we'll figure out how to set the NTRR right, correctly everywhere. The problem that we have in both systems is we don't have a piece of code that sets the NTRRs up correctly everywhere. And hopefully, looking at what we have in SNAP and look at what we have in Panorama and also look at what Lars did. Lars tried to build a standalone driver to set the NTRRs correctly. But that's unfinished. I think it works where it works. And another, so we have three things that work where they work. And we just have to understand what's different. And I, I know some of the things, reasons it doesn't work, but uh, I don't know all. But that's just, it's just another thing in the pipeline. Any other questions? I yes. got another one if you want sure. one. Uh, you know, at, in the computer stores, I'm, I'm finally now seeing a lot of hard drives uh, beyond the two terabyte size. And I, before I talked to Danny and she said, it's hopeless. Is that still the case? I don't think it's hopeless. Uh, there's always the option of, in, on the OS2 side, only presenting the first two terabytes. And then you use the other, it's invisible. Yeah. Whether that's a good solution or not, I haven't looked at it enough. Uh -huh. We definitely have a problem with addressing beyond two terabytes. Sure. Now, can this be handled by making two logical drives? Hard to know. Okay. Pardon? Let's do what Roger <laughs> You want to say something, Roger? Okay, let's do it. 
Sir? No? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to say something? We had a question about greater than two terabyte disk support. And I say, I, my, <laughs> my comment was uh, we're looking at it and we have some possible solutions. <coughs> Uh, 
very faintly, I understood that 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 does not include it. I don't know for certain. What I'm saying it depends on what code. It depends on what code they release. If they're giving back the okay. one, dot, if they if they give the Symphony one dot code over, it'll, it'll it'll likely have it. But the Symphony three, they drop that support. So even if you if you go download Symphony three, you're not able to. Uh, it doesn't happen. So. But, but yeah, as far as everybody's smart suites, gone for this product. But the fact that they're actually looking at open sourcing it and for donating it, it means at least there's room for discussion. Yeah. And so where there wasn't before at all. So you, so you might, if, if there's somebody that can go talk to them to make sure it comes across, that may be something to, to yeah. do. Because yeah. if, if they're just going to dump, if they're just dumping three dot code, yeah. then what they didn't include. Right. Personally, I'd like to see the LibreOffice guys merge themselves into the Apache Foundation crew, yeah. but we'll, we'll have to see what happens yeah, I'll there. Get out of that. I'll Huh? Oh, it's not that gotcha. no, the LibreOffice guys did something very necessary, but things change. Because without that, I think uh, you know, open office would be very, very. Sorry about that. Can we get popped off again? I was to give you a few more stables, but we'll see. We can see that. That's the voice of the other yeah. Sorry, Lewis? It, never mind, Robert. Keep, keep going. You're, you're doing fine. We can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Um, okay, so that's, that's open office. The other thing that's being worked on, and we've actually done that for the first time in, in six years now, I was at the station demo CD uh, is being updated. It's not yet ready for prime time release. Our anticipation is to put the new AGI driver there. Uh, the new USB drivers, SNAP, and on top of that, uh, um, ACPI, because there are already a couple of systems out there that do that. Uh, Robert, are you still with us? Yep, here he is. Jeez. <laughs> okay. Is unbelievable. Yeah, to, anyhow, to finish up on what Roderick was saying, the demo CD is being worked on and it's getting there. You know, it's just, it, from our point of view, it's just more, mostly a refresh. It takes a little bit of time to get each piece of code in there and make sure it works, and it's just, it's just time consuming. It's nothing technical in the sense that there's not been any technical different changes that are going to make it harder for us to build the demo CD. It's just a matter that there's been quite a bit of code that's changed. So, so they all, we all have LibreOffice for OS2, not OpenOffice for OS2. No, no one said that. No, no I, that was a question. I was <laughs> no, no, there's nothing's been said about a LibreOffice for OS2. And, the, and actually, if the Apache stuff hadn't happened, the chances of having LibreOffice for OS2 were that around zero. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure where that came from. Because basically, the LibreOffice guys are the ones that tore out all the OS2 code from their fork. And the Apache organization is uh, working with us? They're willing to leave you. the code in. They, for the obvious reasons that they have no need for the OS2 code, wanted to take it out, but we were, they were open to leaving it in. Now, Apache's always been very good about supporting OS2. You know, HTTPD, it's just a matter of, we have to be good at our end and talk to them. So even Mozilla, you know, has been, the Mozilla Foundation has been okay. They won't make it a tier one platform like we deserve to be, but right. hey, you can't have everything. <laughs> right, are you with us? Yeah, I think the Steve is there to fit in the commercial grades. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I give different <laughs> answers than you do, just to keep it interesting. Yeah, well, it's there. The two of out of that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you pick the one you like. Yes. Um, what about Rex? Is there any chance those newer Rexes that exist on Windows and Linux will ever? Well, we exist talked on about that already. Where's Andy? <laughs> <laughs> How many times have you tried? About half dozen. Half a dozen. I, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to order Paul's Smedley's CD, well, DVD and 
give it a shot with his. Yeah. I think it's just focus. It's, it's, this stuff is just time consuming. It's also, quite frankly, even if some of you guys that just program a little would help, sometimes it's really hard to keep your motivation up when it's only one of you. I think that's one of the things that's really helped Lars with the USB, the fact that even though you know, he's doing the yeoman's work, he gets feedback from other developers. Yeah, and it just makes life simpler. Would it help if some of us, or myself as somebody who, I don't follow the conversation, I don't know these, these protocols and abbreviations, but I'm, I know how to take people who don't talk to each other and get them to talk to other people. I, well, that, done that a lot. That's always a good thing, Structure. especially in our community, because mm -hmm. by and large, we tend to be very independent. And we do stuff on our own. We only come out, and like I say, we only come out of the cave when we have a problem. Right. I have a cave problem. Yeah. I just, I love it. <laughs> it's the nature of the beast, you know. If we weren't the way we were, we'd all be running windows. We'd be running. <laughs> I wish. You know, yeah. you got to be careful to differentiate between different. attitude and reality. You were saying wrong way. Because as bad as Windows is, 95% of the world manages to survive on it. They don't. They spend a fortune on yeah. buying new pieces, bigger pieces. They throw them away and get and, another yeah, one because they've got to keep working. It keeps a lot of people off the unemployment line. Right. You, you, gotta, right. you know, for everything, for everything, there's a yang and vice versa. But I know lawyers say doctors that want to do their own work. And they come in and see that, oh, it's too runny for a decade. Right. I want one of them. Yeah. And they don't want the, the, the installation CD. They want it on, and they don't never want to see their computer. Well, that's fine. And that's it's transparent, that works, like the phone. That works great as long as they don't need Skype or a webcam yeah. or all the stuff that we don't do. You know, if they need what we do, it's, a it's lot great. Of, a lot of small office mm -hmm. that, that need that, and they need the consistency and reliability of all sure. those two. And they, never, they don't know what an operating system is. Well, they just want the thing to work when they push the button. A lot of people that have talked to me have heard me talk about the appliance age. Uh -huh. And that's where we're going. Yeah. You know, that's why smartphones and stuff like that, you know, personally I don't have any need for them because I don't, I'm not out and about enough. But for most people, you know, a smartphone is a viable solution. In other words, they got a place to keep their notes. They already got a phone, so yeah, yeah, it's an expensive, more expensive phone, but you know, they go buy their DVDs and video games, and they're already spending money like that. <coughs> so for them, it's it, it actually, it, it, it actually proves how far um, Windows itself, to a large extent, is running outdated. If you look at how many people these states are connected with BlackBerry, iPhone, and Android phones, and how many people are on the road reading email, reading websites. Uh, well, it's amazing, and it's just kind of slipped in over, like, let's say, four to six years that people started using smartphones, and now you almost see every, almost sure you see somebody looking at a, at, a, at a smartphone to look up some info, so it's pretty crazy. Well, well, for, for I don't know how much time is pulled that for this conference, we have about five uh, for this, uh, for my small. Um, Steve will tell you more details about this tomorrow. Um, one thing I can tell you is that 2010 and also 2011 so far has financially been the best year for equal station ever. I'm, I'm highlighting that fact since Lewis actually uh, sent me an email and then he said, well, people are interested, how is ECS doing? I can't mention uh, financial figures, but I can tell you that also most of our sales now are to corporate customers, the large companies, and you will mention more about that tomorrow in this presentation. So, in in in, even station is actually in a better shape than it ever was before. Especially that the financial resources are, are now there um, to provide funding to uh, get large projects and to keep those large projects moving forward. But people always ask what is the target market of Econ Station? And that is both the end user and the corporate customer. The corporate customer brings in the money and the end user provides the public relations that we need. They talk about it in forums, they talk about it with friends and the press, and that's why we need you guys. So 
educate people from the community and we just will I mean otherwise you would not be traveling to watch stuff uh, from California. We also like uh, the movement itself. So that's not the very quick update just where you see it is standing and how it's moving forward. Okay. How many copies do you sell here? No, that's proprietary. But it's efficient. Suffice it to stay, there's enough copies getting sold to fund the development. Obviously, you'd always like to sell more copies. But, you know, that's just a matter of the folks finding us. Why is it proprietary? Because don't forget, just like the end users live in caves, the corporate users live in caves too. They find us. It's very, you know, it, we've tried. When I say we, I mean medicine. Because, you know, I get asked this question you know, how, how are we going to find these customers? I said, you can't. Because they basically, they're a division or a department of a big corporation. They've been using this line of business app. It's really no different from their point of view than some uh, any other line of business app that happens to run on some hardware. You know, whether, it, whether it being a measurement machine running Qunix or you know something running conveyor belts that happens to run OS2. It's just a component that they need to keep running or replace. And we'll talk about that more tomorrow, a little bit, you know, why they choose us and things like that. But the hard part, it's always difficult, is finding them. And the reality is if that's where the end users can help, and you know, they may actually know those two customers that we should be talking to. Not necessarily that they're going to buy from us right now, because they won't. They'll only buy when they really need to, because that's business. Hello. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, we got bumped again. Well, it's yeah. almost time to wrap up anyway. So. Yeah. 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 You can say your advice now on your back. Yeah. You got a last word. <laughs> Any last words? <laughs> I think it's time to. Are there any other. Are any other. The room there. Any other questions in the room? Yeah. I've got a question. Uh, I used to be able to run N player on, on 1.2R, and I haven't been able to run it on. But you put a support ticket in yet. I know I haven't. How come? Is Mplayer a supported application? It's By... It, uh, yeah, it should run. Commences. And they will tell you if it's not supported. Don't, I don't make assumptions. I let people give me answers. Okay? Mplayer is not put out by us. And, that doesn't mean we don't support it. Roger, that's irrelevant. Then I can tell. Yeah. Empire uh, should work. Or so what's going to do? It works for me on every well, version of here, here, Here's my big thing. If you want to open up, you are looking for support. In a lot of cases, you're more than welcome to start talking in use. But what I've seen in general is that not in all cases you will find the answer there. There's a check I will find in crystal clear how to open up the support ticket and the file. And if needed, we can always point you to the proper location and we can put you in touch with the developer so that the developer also gets feedback. And that, that's for everybody in the room there. If you open up the ticket, attach the file that are documented in chapter 6 of the ECS manual, and that will make processing for the support ticket a lot faster. And if you have a crash, just try crashes. Don't just say my system reaches up. And the manual, the quick guide, comes with each test, describes what type of info you can uh, put with the ticket. That will help us a lot to help you uh, find a proper solution, hopefully. Wonderful. All right. Thank Wonderful. you. Thank you, Roger. Thanks, Roger. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. You enjoy your, uh, your stay there and uh, stay tuned because uh, over the next couple of weeks we can put out some more stuff that will uh, hopefully again increase your appetite for OS2 again or the even stage as it is. Um, and uh, thanks for still being our customers off all of those years. Well, enjoy your stay there again. Thanks, buddy. Thank you, Rob. Be well. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye. Now, M player, I use.